Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Sarah. I'm Fauzan. And welcome to, to the 12th episode of Intertwined. We got married on the 24th of June 2018. And I don't believe we've actually disclosed how we came about to get married. Maybe some yeah. bits and pieces of it. Mm-hmm. So today we'll explore a bit about since when that we wanted to get married, what prep we did, why in the end he chose me and I chose him. I think early 20s, I have this arbitrary number, like 25, is the age at which I think I want to be married at. It was like the ballpark age at which I want to be married. So at age 23, I think I realized that if I didn't do anything in regards to marriage, it probably wouldn't happen. Kan? And I wasn't exactly worried. Tapi macam, I felt like I should do something about this. And the first thing that for me to do at that time was to look for a potential spouse. It's not like which I'm dating. Kan? When you are dating, you're kind of serious. Right? Tapi I think for a lot of people, they don't mind like a long relationship. Um until you're really ready but i didn't want that it wasn't for me la. i think like pre-university pre-uk there was a person that i kind of had a relationship with and at that time i had a feeling of wanting to marry this person <laughs> but then again imagine imagine like before university again mm. how young i was it's gonna take years before you really could commit to marrying mana mana but then after funny understanding that i didn't want that sort of relationship and then the other person at the we had a mutual understanding and a mutual feeling it's your understanding <laughs> <laughs> we had a mutual feeling so the mutual feeling uh, we had a mutual understanding, and uh, yeah, we broke off respectfully, lah. Yeah, respectfully, which we knew that that wasn't the right strategy uh, to do it. So, and then after UK, I had a feeling of wanting to approach this person, but it never happened. So I was still young and thirty almost at and I guess I didn't want to do it that much, kan? And then coming into 22, 23 years of age where I was serious about getting married, I had a thought if I should approach that person. Tapinya, for some reason, I felt like I should start anew. I don't know why. Let me tell you, that pass. <laughs> Be the pass. Before that, like, wrong good it was like, imagine the story. Romantic yeah, imagine the romantic story that you could Tell people all what you do. I we knew, and then the past after a while we, we broke off, and then one day I approach her again, and we get married. Which I'm wrong with it, I hope that person is not watching this. Or nah, I think it's fine. Yeah, it's nothing personal. Nothing personal, but it's just a good experience to share because someone somewhere might be in the same situation yeah. right now. When I was in uni in UK, the idea of kawin muda came into mind. In my second year, I was like, let's look into this Kawin thing. Third year, came back. I thought I was ready then for marriage, but still I was naive. I don't think then I actually really was ready for marriage. The idea was just hula saja. And I thought, okay, this guy could help me become better. Because uh, I was already in my journey to become a better Muslimah. And I thought having someone then could accelerate my growth. At that time, I was like, aiming for a specific person and then didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> I just shifted the focus to me. Let's just focus on what I was doing, Kraja and all that. But it was end of 2016 or 2017 at work. Being an eligible woman, you would say, my work any banyak sama a lot of male. So whenever there were single male at that time, certain people really just paired me up like, oh, this is a potential candidate, potential candidate. Awal awal it didn't affect me, but after a while, it really did annoy me. Ba. I wanted to work, but at the same time, these people are putting in thoughts about he might be the one, not and whatnot. It then much I'm triggered me said that I dapat niya to actually do need to just have someone that sort of accelerated my need to get married. 
But at that time, I believe I was already doing or listening to talks that I believed it would improve me and my marriageability scale. 2017 atu, I think I'm just like, this is the year I just put a lot of effort into making doa, putting my all into, let's, let's see if I can get married. Mm. Although I was insecure, I don't think I'm that pretty in uh, what people want me. But yeah, I think it was 2017 that just really spiked my need to get married. <laughs> So 2017, I knew I was gonna get married, but a question of when, I was just going to ensure that I would be ready enough for marriage when someone asked for me. Like I said, I was insecure and in the conflict that if people would look at me as a potential for a spouse, what I did was then I focused on my work, my career, and I also really was focused doing my NGO work in Persatuan Kesan. Basically, be very involved. Lah. I was doing motivational workshops, activities, and I was also attending a lot of self-improvement courses. Ultimately, I wasn't so focused on improving my cooking skills, but I lived with my housemates in Masato. So I sort of have a feeling which I'm, this is how living with someone would be like. I had that experience. And alhamdulillah, when I was so immersed in self-improvement, I wasn't too focused on like, oh, maybe he's the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy. I wasn't really looking. Um, so it also helped like the thing about Bini Bini is actually payah jaga hati kan, which I'm when you were sort of already opening your eyes to like looking for a potential someone. It's so hard to, to not go and meet someone single and be like, maybe he's the one, maybe he's the one. But I managed to ensure that I closed off those doors. I had a certain criteria. When Durangani in the meet the criteria, I already filtered off from this. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, preparation wise, I think for me, what's two of the most important things, I think, to be ready to be a husband was Satu is the Dean. Back then, I was always up in it, learning more. Uh, about Islam and currently still is there it's a never ending phase you you always should be learning and the second thing was my financial I was doing freelancing I would say I was handling kira businesses la. I was in the Nerf rental business called Nerf Rack it's still an ongoing business currently but I'm not exactly involved anymore and I was also doing production. So like creating videos and then graphic designing with, with other call. Back then, I'm in the stable, you know, but I, I was making some at the income. It wasn't ideal. Tapi, I was passionate about creative work, uh, production and creating videos. It was at the, something I wanted to uh, pursue. So I kept doing that. Financial was really a concern for me because as a husband, I had to provide Kendo. Tapi, I still feel like maybe it's possible masih, to be married. I believe when you want to do good at work and marriage is a very good thing to do. Allah will help you. Now. And Allah will bagi rezeki and show you the way. So I believed in that. And I was like, Macam, let's just give it a try. If it works out, then it works out. If it doesn't, then you don't really lose anything. That's true. Because I think... Masani, a lot of men, they don't want to go extra step until their financials are stable. Baru tajam, okay, let's then go into marriage. Tapi actually, it's in parallel, baha. You can still be ready, walaupun not financially ready in a sense. Tapi just make that step to go into marriage. Kanya like, you don't do anything wrong song pasal rezeki. Yeah. You wait for marriage to give you rezeki. Inda. You actually also usaha for rezeki. Yeah. And then at the same time, look for marriage. And that's how you approached it, kan? Yeah. There was a minimum. La. I feel like, okay, if I reach this minimum, it's still possible. Depends on uh, what the lifestyle is. Long, uh, nanti. Tapi, yeah, and that's something that happens in the discussion la, with the person that you want to be married with. Like the expectations of the life after marriage. I understand, uh, for some people, the 
parents play a role lah juga. Some parents, they want the best for their own punya anak kan. They want their children to have a stable job and income before they get married. But in my case, I had to convince my parents lah. Sudah ada orang bagi restu, macam they're okay with it. And okay lah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's an important point. Risk two from parents as well. So that's also what we did for prep, right? Risk two from parents. Um, there's a lot of stories that I could actually tell Claudia. Because choosing the right spouse is very important, very critical. For a lot of people, it's a one-time thing. And it's a decision that will affect you On the throughout. Yeah, for the rest of your life, you'll be waking up. To this person, you'll be interacting with this person and working with this person, you know, to build the family and bring the family to Jannah. Islam teaches us that there are four main things that you should be looking at when you look for a spouse. And the first thing is a deen and then the financial. Third is beauty. Fourth is your punya keturunan. So, for myself, the top two was first the Dean, and second was actually, I think, be- Beauty. Third, Keturunan. And the fourth, and the fourth is Financial. It was like the least important for me. Lah. I started to look for someone lah, as a potential spouse, and then getting help from a third person, the third person would ask for me to see if the person is available or interested. So I think before I finally got to you, there were two more people. <laughs> they were involved. How did I just know this now? <laughs> there were one that I was interested in, but they were taken. <laughs> They were thinking to that. As I say, you just you just try, <laughs> and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work to have, because uh, Allah will always give you the best for you, la. There's a story I wanna tell, uh, which I always find interesting, lah, because uh, we're talking about choosing the right spouse, kan? Mm-hmm. I'll talk a bit more about my preferences and what I was looking for. So back in secondary school. In Sekolah Menengah Rimbau, I had a circle of friends, which was my classmates. So, yeah, when we do, yeah, the nerds. Uh, I think it was exam season. We were having study groups. During Zuhur or Asar, we would pray at the surah. We took turns, siapa jadi imam. When it was my turn, you know, and this is multiple occasions, lah, bukannya sekali saja. So when we prayed together, after finishing the prayers, kan baca doa. I remember this vividly. How I prayed to ask from Allah in Malay for a pious wife and a beautiful wife. What that was about, Narga? Yeah, it was kind of like a joke, we love each other. But I was asking for it seriously. The two main things that I was looking for was true even back then. Back then, I had an idea of the type of person, physically at least, that I was looking for. I remember I was imagining someone who was tall and (laughs) fair-skinned. So we think that's not me. Yeah, exactly, exactly again. Besides the physical, I remember I wanted someone who was coy. Coy? Coy is like... You know, like shy and manja kind of person. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, so I remember wanting that type of person lah when I was younger. Sekalinya itu tu, sudahnya deciding to seriously look for a person itu, how I ended up choosing you tu. Macam I looked at the people who was potential and somehow I had an interest in you. For some reason, which I actually can't explain because, you know, as I said, I was, I thought I wanted someone tall and fair skin. Kira macam, sama macam myself lah kali yang. So, macam, dia apa, pinang di belah dua. So, sepayang gam. Yeah, but for some reason, I had 
and interest in you. And I was, I guess I was confused here, but I was, why am I interested in this person? <laughs> I could say that one of the traits that you had that made me interested because you were ke hadapan, I would say. So you were a person who gave talk and then lead people. That was something that I was attracted to. Lah. But physical wise, I didn't imagine myself to be <laughs> oh, <good>. yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, much, um, not what I thought process of choosing your spouse at the kind is a very important decision and the thing that I did was Sonat Isihara. Even when you have weight everything and you feel like this is the best decision and best move for you can Istihara is always important because Istikharah is you leaving it to Allah. Lah. So when you have made your decision, uh, you're asking from Allah that if this is the best for me, if this is the best for my future and my deen, then make me inclined towards it. Also make ease for me towards this decision. And if it's the opposite, you ask from Allah that kita ni Allah that it's not for you and that Allah will read up with you. So it's not just for marriage, which is very important. It's for all the other things as well. Like big purchases, career decisions, I suppose my thought. Yeah. Even then I still had my doubts going into the marriage. I was concerned with what people would think. A close friend, I think you know this he wouldn't classify us as being <laughs> so for some reason I was concerned with that and thinking about other people's expectations of my marriage. A piece of ananya, it doesn't really matter. What matters is knowing why you're getting married and you know what you really want to get out of it. I guess that's one of the job I'm getting during before the wedding actually happened. For me, best thing what I did was I had sudah a standard of who I wanted. Uh, as you mentioned, macam agama tu, it's a no-brainer. I wanted someone yang bukan saja soleh, tapi musleh. So kalau soleh ni, ya, okay, beribadah, ya solat. Tapi semuanya untuk dirinya sendiri. Tapi I wanted someone yang bukan saja soleh, tapi musleh. Ya, bukan saja beribadah untuk dirinya sendiri, tapi ya bermanfaat for orang lain. You can sort of see that you might not be able to see Soleh as much. You, there is certain things you can just look as what Prauzan mentioned. Every Muslim itu, ia boleh nampak dari beberapa aspek. I wanted someone yang jua is open to doing uh, benda-benda manfaat, being in a uh, society, involved berambis langu, helping improve lives. So that was the standard for me. Soleh and Muslim. <laughs> Financial wasn't a big actor for me. Macam it, macam bukan, I do, don't put standard in it lah. I love my girls. Tapi dulu diorang macam, eh Sarah, because uh, I work in the oil and gas industry kan, sekali diorang macam, eh Sarah, kalau kau kahwin sama ni, pergi saya ni lah, uh, kaya atas kamu ni, macam tu lah. Those were put in my head. Like if I marry someone from the same industry, like, oh kami kaya nanti. Baik juga, that wasn't my focus lah. Aku macam, ah, nah, oh, baik tak, this person has a stable income, but kalau ia inda meet my requirements in the deen ato, easily macam, flash from any list. Even Rupa, because I knew in terms of beauty, I wasn't there. So aku pun macam paksa turunkan my standard lah. Uh, I couldn't ask for like a super handsome di mata orang punya standard. So I wasn't exactly expecting physically. I didn't mind lah how this person looked. And my turunan comes a bit later. And somehow in 2017, before you approached, I actually ada tolak lah. Uh, although alhamdulillah, I really respect the way it came about. Cuma tak jadi lah, cakap mau jorang aku ni sebenarnya. Alhamdulillah along the way that not came and just like oh, uh, there's this guy. Sekali macam okay, who cakap? Sekali macam oh, Alzan. Who macam hmm cakap? So we worked together in Persatuan Kesan, right? So at that time in 2017, we worked in the team media, so we were already interacting. And I already knew Fauzan since UK Joa sebenarnya because we worked as Ahli Jawatan Kuasa in one of those Kem Nidra, Kem Ibadah. So he was always the videographer, photographer. At one time when he was the PIC, I was the unique media. In second year, I actually ever went to his house to what project. We were doing the documentary for Kem Nidra. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we were interviewing Ustazah Hanisa, interviewed 
who is um, and we were meeting the rumah your house i remember yasrin was there i don't know if saidi was there i, I think saidi was there uh, saidi was there in we were we were the wasna and that time i put exposed la to your family and like we said and we prayed together with the family wah in the surau yeah. so i remember that i don't remember that. remember iman was so small uh, then already second year at of much um uh, I didn't think of anything. Then I just saw like, oh, this guy has a good family. Chumata sa jala. Third year, and then after 2015, ato, we worked together in the same NGO, Persatuan Kasan. We had a lot more interaction. Me, Saidi, Amira, Hatin, Ikmar even, sama si Wazin. We were in the IFTR publication. Uh, kami can publish a book. So we got Otter, where she freelance, to design the logo. So we had exposure to to each other so my point of view for thousand aku macam oh this person is great but i don't think this person would ever choose me so i had telling my aku macam yeah well the people can look at him and see macam he's attractive alhamdulillah agama yang baik and people actually vouched for him um being a good person lah in the back of my head I'm like why would he choose me so that's why i always close the door to macam even think of him in a potential spouse cuma tu lah so in 2017, when under under that knock, so you must have pause on, so you must have pair to do like what? Pause on? It's a serious guy. It's a bat batala batah for me to digest that like pause on. Tapi alhamdulillah like okay, let's see where this is going because with all that said, I've already seen him, his family, how he works. I knew bah we we work professionally, so it was an easy go ahead for me. As opposed to the others, pasal kira kan awal sudah aku macam okay, I I see what he says he's doing, and he's already fits the criteria I mentioned. Your physical, your face apa, it was just a bonus for me. Um, but when it came, sekali aku macam okay, let's just see where this goes lah, because we only agreed as like hey, let's check whether we can match. Kan? Belum lagi final or belum lagi yes to marriage, but yes to getting to know each other for marriage. Yeah. We got to know each other in the last ten nights of one area. Yeah. To to have that meet where we actually asked soalan and alhamdulillah, I believe in that conversation. Macam it just flowed well. Match lah our mission vision. It was sort of like a no brainer jua to proceed. Tapi of course. We had time to decide lah, of course, this is hard apa. And alhamdulillah lah, last ten nights lagi. So, macam, kemuncak lah nice for me. Macam, my ibadah tu extra having to really ask Allah, like, if this is my jodoh. Raya was the ultimatum that, yes, we wanted to. Yeah, I don't, I remember taking a while to decide. <laughs> After that. After discussion and Coming to the discussion, ito, which we, when we met, oh, there were people we trust. Yeah, to be there, to mm-hmm. monitor us. And when we have this getting to know and discussion phase of the process, la, that discussion was very important because that's when we get to share our life goals and our dreams and our plans for the future. Kan? I had to tell Sarah that I wanted to pursue music, filmmaking and whatnot, just to have her have some sort of expectations. Because if you don't do that, it's possible that further down in your marriage, that your spouse could ask you to quit this dream of yours, just so that you could focus more on the family, uh, instead of macam supporting you and yeah, you making time towards that goal. You could have a long relationship with someone and still don't know what to expect mm. of the marriage. So a lot of it is asking the right questions, questions that really matter to you and your future. Yeah. What's so great about Asma and Sate is that we were both in Persetuan Kesan. So we already knew that you and me, we are involved in something outside of our personal life and our work. And that we had a mindset and a goal of not just living for ourselves, but also to benefit people out there. Mm. In backstory, way before we even gotten to know each other better, 
you publish like some of your rap, the production yang you did with Otter really aligns with what I actually like Jua. Even back then, I was already supporting him like all oh, maju, maju bunai kind of thing. Like, yeah, you can do it. So I already had interest in that. So I don't see that as a hindrance lah. That's why much I'm easily match because we already kind of knew how each other works. Uh, I know what he was getting into and I'm good with that. Maybe just a quick note. Like looking into our family, I would say kira sekufu lah. Mm. Like our family too, it, it's not a untrusting, you know, like one side of the family. Contohnya, like very rich. So, and the others, the other side is macam not so financially stable. Kira boleh ngam lah. Like my family and your family ato. And I think macam your family pun macam religious wise not kira. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great point you bring. So, tadi kan really back into the four points. Uh, one is the dean, which is like we said, it's a no-brainer. It's one of your yep, criteria, one of my criteria. And then financial is um, just okay. Physically, like we got through that the moment we said, bah, looking at it at the potential. So, you already passed that stage. And then lastly, yang to find out keturunan natin lah. And then sekufu-wise, um, we found that out during and getting to know atulah sebenarnya even after after we both agreed to proceed into marriage ato you had some of your ujian i also had my ujian the moment we agreed to proceeding for marriage um which was belum lagi decided when along the way ato there were people who actually were interested in me it's like which i'm where did these people come from chatua like, why now? I also see that as an ujian lah. When we agreed, only a, a small number of people knew. Until before, very close to the wedding day. Yeah, that's when like, ujian started coming in in the form of you find out someone's interested in you and things like that. And it could actually deter you from going into this. But alhamdulillah, by jaw, when we came into the idea of marriage, we were already grounded. We knew what we wanted. So these people yang came after them easily, like, it's okay, no. My point is, you have to be really grounded in your decision and your harapan kepada Allah tu lah. Because the moment you already ask Allah, if this is good for me, pemudahkan lah. So certain things come and catch out your decision, but really having the strength and the mentality to go through it lah. And not being swayed by all these other temptations, in a sense. Along the way, going into marriage ato, ni pemudahkan. So that's how I knew, alhamdulillah, he's the one. Uh, um, yeah, it was in June. And yeah, I think another important point to note, the, when he asked for me and we went through the whole process, we never individually texted. Nada, nada individual text like, you know, hey, how are you? And things like that. Yeah, so we had a group. Yeah, where someone where, could monitor yeah. what we were talking about lah. To me, it's not confirmed until sah ikatan uh, nikah tu lah. Baru tak macam, yes, uh, we are free to go. But um, the moment you said you want to nikah, it's best not to spread the word out because things could just happen lah. Fast forward five years later, alhamdulillah, I do not regret choosing Alzan at all. Good to know. Did you regret choosing me? Yeah. <laughs> For me, when I reflect back, I'm like, Alhamdulillah, the process that too makes me feel secure about. I was already insecure about beauty standards in a sense, but yeah, I specifically brought that up because I know which um, after we got married, which um, you talked about how it was one of your insecurities. Yeah, I was really insecure because I knew I wasn't. Pretty in a societal standard, yeah. and I wasn't super ugly, but I wasn't super pretty. Jua, uh, tapi alhamdulillah, um, the combat is I know apa 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 yang Allah bagi kita ni Allah pinjamkan rupa kita ni pinjamkan badan semuanya is the best. Like I wouldn't ask for more. Uh, Allah bagi yang terbaik, and it's up to us to utilize apa yang Allah bagikan. I still had a certain sense of insecurity, macam seriously, ya pilih aku. When actually, as you mentioned, can we work together? It in my head, why would he pick me when actually there's more people down like Nawa? 
but rightfully so it shouldn't have been my area of focus lah pasal if beauty is it then the kemana ah agama is the most important one for me um and our vision and mission that's so that's the story we really hope caring what we've said will help you if you're still figuring out how to get married or when to get married and what to do to get married for those who's looking into marriage ask yourself how much have i prepared to be ready for marriage your ilmu communication skill look inside and ask yourself that as opposed to looking outside so look internally and then baru tah you go around and look for your potential spouse If you have any questions that you'd like to ask us or there are certain stories you want us to elaborate further, sure. comment below and we will answer it via our intertwined stories for our future videos inshallah. So this has been the 12th episode of Intertwined. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bananya pernikahan ni kan macam kalau solat like within 5 minutes you can do puasa in Ramadan zakat pun macam specific times lah tapi pernikahan ni adalah ibadah yang terpanjang during our first night lepas kahwin we stayed in Radisson kan that night we were just telling stories that was like the first time ever we get to properly talk I brought up the fact that I remember seeing you in Mimba Point with a lady I don't remember this at all. Kali, <laughs> you countered back to me at that time, which I'm. Uh, oh, you know, I actually remember now. Um, I was easily recognizable back then because I tend to wear my Palestine cap um, ke belakang. Okay, I remember he telling me. Oh, I remember um, uh, when I was with Tipika. Tipika is uh, her sister. Yeah, Fazan's sister. Di Rimba Point, I don't know it was Giant then or Rimba Point. I think it's Rimba Point sudah. Um, I was passing by. You said, "Pika, check out ah, you, eh bang tu, sudah so, habang kalle." Yeah, cause uh, yeah, I think I remember this. Uh, cause I was into you know like rap, hip hop, and I think my sister kind of knew that I was looking for someone yang some like pakai dindong apa ni jadi lah. So I think she kind of like cakap ah ni gak niye. That story only came about after kami kawin and and somehow I was just passing by I just saw if I was an in someone and I didn't know that was your sister then kan when you bring out that story it was funny kan see si Ika mentioned like eh bang atu kan jadi ham bang and look how we ended up yeah. and those cute two stories that makes you think John Doe is real right it is <laughs> just to make it more romanticized <laughs> romanticized